G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is an anti-armor prime handmade with bullets exploding for area damage and vats critical meter filling up 15% faster, major and minor legendary effects respectively. So a little bit of a combination with uh, some cool Fallout 4 legendary effects. Anti-armor is obviously the upgraded penetrating, bullets exploding is obviously explosive, and vats critical meter is only double damage with crits away from being lucky. So yeah, a pretty nice weapon, and it is going to synergize very well with our stealth commando build because that... Um, not only the damage from the explosiveness and the anti-armor, which does work, but the anti-armor doesn't affect the explosive projectiles. But the VAT's critical meter filling up faster means we'll be able to get more crits going, which means more damage. Very, very nice indeed. So we've got this loaded out with the standard stuff, except for the true long barrel and true stock. Usually I have it aligned, but I'm not going to be using ground pounder, so I'll just chuck on true to compensate a little bit for that lack of, um, I guess... Uh, hip fight accuracy. We're going to get a little bit more recoil out of this, though, which should be manageable anyway. So, prime receiver getting more damage than our powerful auto. Let's get this thing specced up, shall we? So, filling up perception. They're going to be commando perks because it is an automatic rifle. Now, interestingly, um, these commando perks, all of them have that R91 assault rifle that was in Fallout 3, but that weapon is nowhere to be seen in this game, which is odd. I'm dropping Nerd Rage for just three ranks of Gunsmith to keep this thing going around better. I'm not intending to be running around at Nerd Rage threshold anyway, because we'll probably get be uh, good enough damage to, you know, not warrant that. And of course, Bloody Mess goes on in Critical Savvy for, you know, hitting those criticals quicker, and I think that'll um, synergize very well with the extra critical thing, because I'm only really going to be using up you know, 55% of my critical meter, which means we should be okay to go. It is during the day now, so I've got Sneak at rank 3, um, and Gunfoot at rank 2. We'll be switching this around if we happen to find ourselves in a night fight. The time is 4.16, so, you know, we'll be able to use this thing with its suppressed goodness very, very quickly. But there we go. We've got 126 damage, which is pretty solid. And we're only out damaging our regular powerful auto handmade by 5 damage. And, um, yeah, the bloodied effect is not really, um, you know, giving us any change to that damage. So, honestly, the prime receivers are kind of negligible. Unless you're fighting, like, a Scorch Beast Queen where you need that because you're only be doing 30% damage anyway, which is ridiculous, by the way. Fix that shit, Bethesda. Alrighty, so here we are outside of the Moody's place. Here's our handmade and our buffs. Ooh, look at all of those things. That melee damage is definitely going to help. We're going to be running with Chameleon today because we're not going to be at super low health, rendering the use of unyielding a little bit useless. But unfortunately, what that means is um, we're going to have a bit more trouble aiming down sights with this thing, you know, when we're not moving. But there's always third person for that, which is uh, useful. So, basically, what's going to happen here is I'm just going to Stealth Commando all of these dudes, and we'll see if we can get some nice gun food chains happening here. Now, in an ideal world, I'll have a couple more points in luck. Um, maybe if they raise the uh, special cap later on during the life cycle of this game, I could shift more points into luck, making this a better RNG slinger build, but, you know... I feel like we're doing just fine. So, no adrenal reaction, just that extra adrenaline damage. 192 damage, which is very solid. Now, as a long-time aligned barrel and stock user, I am actually feeling that recoil a little bit. It's actually... You could see me miss a few shots at the start there because I was having trouble adjusting to it. But, yeah, there's a little bit more recoil. It's still very manageable. It's got a low rate of fire anyway, so it's not going to be jumping around in your face or have a horrible recoil animation like the Radium Rifle or the 10mm sub. So, you know, it's all very manageable, so definitely liking the true setup. And we're all done here. Let's move on inside. Alrighty. I want to see how long I can do this without actually being hit. And to do that, I'll uh, use my super marsupial jumpy powers to get up where they can't reach me. Or will have trouble reaching me. Or, okay, I'll, maybe I'll have trouble reaching them. But, you know, it's nice to be up on the pipelines. We'll, we'll do this from the top down like a super assassin version of winter or something either that or we could just kill these guys in the control room real quick why not do that eh okay what else have we got to kill down here and whilst the um you know the damage bonus i'm stuck great the number one remedy to soft locks is just getting in and out of your power armor because that will force you to move 
But regardless of uh, that nonsense that I just encountered, you'll find that the Prime Receiver is a lot better once you get your damage going high because, um, you know, that little extra percentage of damage that you do gain does scale up with the damage going up. So you'll end up with a little bit more damage than what you'd usually get, you know. It's, it's not a huge difference, but it's good enough to say that, you know, you are making a tiny bit of a difference. And we've got our first Legendary of the day, I believe, and he gives us a piece of shit. Thank you very much for that. Um, that's scriptware. I'll, I'll be chucking that in Murmur's old machines later on. And uh, soon enough, we'll have a thousand across all characters, and that was a bit sloppy of me. So it looks like we're hitting him for about 700 to 800, depends if uh, we get those criticals. 876, ha, huh, 76, and... Yeah, that's what it's like when you're reloading without the use of Speed Demon, because getting in and out of power armor seems to just ruin everything, but... Okay, maybe not. See, I'm used to having Ground Pounder on when it comes to automatic handmaids, but that reload speed isn't too bad. It is sped up a tiny bit from... or actually quite, quite significantly by, um... Speed Demon, so... I've got nothing to complain about there, it's just when I pop those useless reloads, it kind of bites me in the bum. But that's okay, because we're super sneaky, super invisible, these guys will not know we're here, and I don't think I've taken a hit yet. And, you know, that's kind of cool. I guess it's because there's not a lot of pressure on me to keep alive, because usually if I'm using um, stuff at Nerd Rage Threshold, what'll happen is um, I'm... I'm a little bit on edge because any old shot would kill me, so, you know, having that safety net of being at full health while still getting this amount of damage is some good stuff. And I know people have been waiting for this one for a while. I, I think I might have mentioned that earlier. If I didn't, it was probably in a cut first recording when I, I don't know, said, said something stupid or said something wrong or said something that I really wouldn't like it. And that was a lazy attempt there by, um... Oh, lazy attempt at increasing my accuracy from concentrated fire. You might get dropped soon, son. Oh, we've taken our first hit. Too bad we're not playing on uh, you only live once rules. Although, there'd be no reason to go in here whatsoever when it comes to, you know, you're only... Like, implying you could actually get these runs happening in Fallout 76. Impossible. There's too many extraneous variables, like other players being around and all that nonsense to potentially mess that up. So, that as a concept is completely... Mm, I don't think it'll work, to be honest. It'd be interesting if to see if someone does it, and... Ooh, that was nice and laggy. See, the hipfire is good. I don't, I don't have to aim down sights at all. But when I do, I might as well just almost die. <laughs> see, again, there's that safety net of being at a... Having a health pool that is usually a little bit bigger than what I'm used to when I'm running with bloodied weapons, which means I can, you know, get away with little mistakes like that. And, in fact, I'm kind of rewarded because that gives me extra damage. We're up to 226 now. And since um, these guys are all running at me at once, I feel like we don't actually have to hunt them all down. So, in that case, I guess we'll move straight on. We are detected by what? Okay, apparently there's super mutant ghosts in the room. So, we've got a couple of options here. Since this thing does have a big old shush tube on the front of it, we can do this all one by one, very, very stealthy. But, you know what? Let's make this interesting, shall we? So, we'll annoy some of these ghoulies over here. We've got that safety net of a nice health pool, so why not, ow? Why not get all of these feral fuckers riled up, see if we can't get them chasing me down the hallways, eh? Alright, here we go. And there's the fat guy. He's here. And... Ah, okay, here they come. Alright, I'm just going to close the door in their faces. Here we go. Wait for it. And then open fire. And then miss that guy repeatedly. Okay, we can just hit him through here. They're really quick this way. Alright, so that kind of didn't go to plan, but you know... The strength of this weapon is it's going to, you know, allow me to get out of this situation where I otherwise wouldn't put myself in. But for the sake of a little bit of interesting gameplay here, I'm just going to 
let all of the ghoulies line up here and uh, just mow them all down. Admittedly, a better rate of fire at this point would be great. So, you know, if I was using something like a anti-armor explosive LMG, I would have mowed these guys down a lot easier than I have. The rate of fire isn't that great. Unfortunately, there's no such thing as an explosive fire rate handmade, but if there was, oh, mate, oh, mate, that would be fucking tits. Which is uh, to say that it'd be very effective, yes. And that is a hunter's minigun. Okay, that's gonna... That's gonna make me go straight over capacity. That's okay. I think we're pretty much done. Oh, fucking... That's a legendary notification from, like, five drops ago. Why is it telling me this now? There's the hunter's minigun. It's okay. I can hear him. He's out there somewhere. I can't see him on the compass, but he's thumping around. And he is one-shotted. And having a look at the damage now, at Adrenal Reaction, which is pretty heavy, 241, so that's pretty good. I suspect right now we're actually sitting under Nerd Rage Threshold, so we'll attempt to swap out Gunsmith for that, because I don't know what's happened. Maybe I've got too many goddamn perk cards floating around, the game just sort of breaks itself. Okay, not quite. Alrighty, so night has sufficiently fallen upon us at this point, which means we get 3.7 times sneak attack criticals, which are utterly devastating. And now to smash some crabbies with our newfound potential of destruction. Yep, 946 damage, yep, works pretty well. Don't even have to sneak for these guys, but to, you know, to add insult to injury, that's what I'm gonna do. And we're gonna, you know, hit, hit him even worse with a big old wall hacks there. Yeah, you know, because vats can do that. It's gonna be one very dead queen in a second. Yes, there we go. Um, did we actually just destroy everything? You know, there's usually a bit more crabs floating around, but, you know, I think you get the idea. I think I might have kept that adrenaline from Swan because I did teleport down here very quickly. But, ooh, it's a plasma pistol. Nice. See, I need those parts still. Okay, so here we are at the train yard smash, and what exactly has been lined up for us on this occasion, eh? <clears throat> Hans Moleman presents Man Getting Hit by Anti-Armor Explosive Handmade. Give that man the $10,000. Ah, uh, curious to anyone who gets that reference. Anyway, so we've got some pretty chunky boys down here, and um, they are legendary. I think I found myself in a legendary server, actually. Um, these are not to be uh, messed with, though. They're, they're packing some major heat with their big old missile launchers. I totally just looked away and jumped over that one, so I'm feeling quite good about myself. That was totally... Whoa, there's another one. Yeah, these guys are... These guys are carrying around RPGs like you wouldn't believe, and fuck you, Cryolator. God damn it, why'd I have to pick that up? I guess I would have forgotten anyways, but regardless, we'll hobble our way over to this particular room and see what we can do. And then, more dudes. At 12... 1300 damage, almost 1400. In fact, I think I hit over 1400 with that um, extra explosive damage, which is only doing like 28 extra, so whoops. Alrighty, time for Scorch Beast hunting. We're gonna make some use out of this prime receiver. So, a couple of things have changed. We're under Nerd Rage Threshold now because we're making this act like a bloody thing. We've got ourselves unyielding for extra special benefits. There they are. Mmm, yes. 34 agility. How much action points does that give us? Um, fucking heaps, I guess. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. And go away unyielding notifications of getting good shit because, yes, we've already got that, alright? We know this. And you're wrecked. Okay, cool. We can move on. Yes, that's my unyielding bits. I shouldn't have had to show you them because they're all going to pop up eventually, right? Alright, so here come the fucking toasted fucking mushroom boys. I just realized I don't have serendipity on, so I better not bloody get hit all the time. Uh, you know what? Probably not too much of an issue, man. If I, you know, hit myself, that's going to be a little bit more of a pain to deal with. Or if they get too close to it, I blow myself up with my explosive bullets. That's where it's going to potentially create problems. 
I hear those grenade launchers going off. Oi! I'd like to summon a Scorch Beast, please. Okay, they're not going to play ball with me today, apparently. I can kill these guys instead. Ah, yes. Some gun fill action. I ran out of action points once there. Excellent. Okay, well, they're going to come back nice and quickly anyway, but... Yep, let's see if we can't get this guy to spawn. Actually, I should stay away from that thing. It's going to give me radiation poisoning, I guess. Alright, so I was a little bit dissatisfied because I couldn't get the one to trigger outside of the, you know, the ground where I usually instantly kill them with my super sledge. So, one more and then we're done. That was a totally unnecessary reload. I can't believe I sat through that. Well, that's okay. We can make him launch. Yeah. Alrighty, so there you have it. That was the anti-armor explosive prime with uh, that's criticals, you know, filling up faster handmade. Very, very useful for gun fu right there, as you can uh, probably have seen. And, uh, yep, that's about enough from this thing. Uh, if you'd like to see this thing in your game, well, you better find someone who's selling it and cough up caps because this thing is worth every goddamn penny that you throw at it. It is that strong. It is only bested in my mind by a bladed explosive handmade in terms of raw damage output. But if you don't feel like, you know, having your health get uh, gated at lower than 100%, maybe if you're into PvP, then this is probably the one for you because you always want your health to be at as close to 100% as possible. But who even cares about non-nuclear you know, nuclear winter PvP? I sure as hell don't. That's why I don't bother testing because you're just going to insta-kill people anyway if you've got the right builds and, you know, it's not very fun to watch. But if there's someone wanted... Um, I'll go ahead and uh, test out what we can do, but, you know, it's just gonna one-shot him, and that's kind of boring, to be honest. Stuff with bigger health pools, like Scorch Beast, that's, that's better at seeing what kind of damage it can do, and the combat, you know, effectiveness of different situations. I shouldn't have to explain myself here. Anti-Armor Handmade, get one with Explosive, they're good. Thank you very much for watching, guys.